Okay. I feel like that teases up well for how will we eat in 2023 article. Here are 10 predictions. And they include high end jello shots, fascinating locations, outer space. It's like they've got some big predictions. But actually, I was like, when I was researching for this, a lot of people had similar predictions. So I think they might be like headed in the right direction. We could, they're a trusted source. We brought yeah. a trusted source to the podcast, you guys. <clears throat> so the first one is flavor of the year, and it is embrace the brine. So like marine flavors. And so even like cocktails that are garnished with like crab claws or oysters, like very like brunch vibes was one of the things in there too. The big brunch is making Clamato cool. Yep. That's Which I was actually I with family. We were in the New Year's in Deadwood. I don't know why this made me think of this because I just read sea vegetables like kelp. But my sister-in-law, they were stacking on seaweed. Oh, there you go. So then word of the year, this goes right into what you're saying. Calling yourself a climatarian, as we learned in a couple episodes ago, what that is, is actually so 2022. I know. I love that. And the new term is regenivore. What well, yours was slightly different, though, the word that you used. Or what? January, because that's they're oh, calling it. Oh, January. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha, gotcha. So that is where we're at in 2023. It's about healing the planet through carbon reducing agriculture, rigorous animal welfare policies, good treatment of people who grow and process the food, climate hero ingredients. So are you, you would you call yourself a regenivore? No. I think I just call <laughs> myself an eater. <laughs> a person who eats food with morals. <laughs> Have you seen the and a knowledgeable background? That's yeah. what they're melding together. <laughs> Have you seen there's like a reels going around that I want to thank me for eating all this amazing food this year. I want to <laughs> thank my body. I'm like, that's me. <laughs> I want to thank me for eating. <laughs> I like on paper, though, like I support what Regenivore stands for. Yeah. I like it better than climatarian. Yeah. We're definitely moving in the right direction. I think so, too. And the fact they even man like mention animal welfare and like things like that, I feel are a good sign. Or focusing on like he like healing the planet, which hopefully the next level of nuance then will be how animals play a role in that cycle and they're part of the solution. Yeah. Which I'm totally fine of baby steps in the right direction, but that's like the umbrella above. So I feel like again, very happy with this prediction for the word of the year. I feel like I'm gonna start using it, Regenivore. I love that for you. So snack of the year is chicken skins. So this is funny compared to like a vegan topic. Like mm -hmm. literally people are using like chicken skins in place like of carbs like chips for 2023. So I was very surprised when I, you know, scrolled over to this screenshot for you that the snack of the year was an animal based snack, which like in my mind, then I always have this conversation and you and I actually had it when we were guests on Damien's Business of Agriculture podcast. But like sometimes do you think we make a mountain out of a molehill? You know what I'm saying? Is the does the loud voice of vegan, vegetarians, plant based, is it get in our head a little bit too much where we're like, we have to fight and combat this narrative when the snack of the year is chicken rinds? <laughs> I don't know. That's I mean, what it spurred for me when I saw it. I think yes and I think no. I and I, I think it's similar to what I said at Damien's is that I think if we don't do some combating, they will get louder and more than they this are. This is now. also so in my mind, and I guess you can tell me if you have a different opinion about this, but I do feel like a lot of the places that push these bad and false and quotation bad narratives, but like museums, someone just sent me the other day, they were touring one in, I think, Chicago or New York or somewhere, one of my friends. And they're like, look at what was up there. And it was a whole thing. And I oh, think yes. Katha even did I got sent maybe it this too. about how, so I do feel, and this going to what I was going to say, these, this magazine article is the food space. It's like chefs. And I do feel like the food space has like a better concept on, you know, what animal price proteins and the whole system and how food works as opposed to like people outside removed from it. So I guess I'm not, the more I think about it, I'm not totally surprised that a food prediction would involve an animal based protein animal as protein. the snack. Yeah. And it said, cause things are getting so expensive that they're trying to figure out how to like utilize like the entire animal. So if you're going to buy a chicken, like what else can we do besides just and have that a that is the conversation we should be having. Yep, for sure. A hundred percent. Like how can we use more of it? How can we make it better? Not how can we replace it? How can we get by without it? Because you can't. You can yeah. not. So next food trend is Japan adjacency. So basically just this was everywhere. Very heavy Asian cuisine influences. And then the adjacency would be like Italian food with a Japanese flair. And I will say one of the best restaurants I've 
ever been to was actually an Italian restaurant in Japan. And it was amazing. So I'm really excited for this trend. I'm like so confused by this trend, but that's okay. Cause I don't think I'll be experiencing a lot of it in my little local rural town. <laughs> so I'm I sorry. Think this trend will ride on by me in 2023. <laughs> okay. Moving on to the next one is the thrill of the thrift. I liked this like, one. Inflation is just crazy. Like people are just trying to figure out what they can do to save money, get use small appliances like microwaves, air fryers instead of turning on the oven. And I was laughing because my dad actually got an air fryer for Christmas from my mom. I was like, oh, he's so on on trend so for twenty twenty three. So on point. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Way to go, dad. Uh-huh. You got an air fryer. The next one was tuber of the year. This one I saw everywhere. It is a yube. I think is how you say it. That's how I'd a, say it. A slightly nutty tasting vanilla scented purple yam from the Philippines. It looks beautiful. There's like a yube pie that they have a picture of. We can share it. And it looks like bright purple. So I'm like a decent cook, chef, whatever you want to call it. But I am the worst in my family. Maybe tied with my oldest sister. But my two middle sisters are fabulous chefs. And I feel like I could do not. I feel like this, the image of this beautiful, like you said, this tuber cake or pie. I feel like that w- that has my sister's name written all over it with some date nest crusted graham cracker thing. I don't know. It just really <laughs> reminds me of my sister. So I'm actually going to send it to her and get her. I want to see if maybe she'll make some things with it or something. Because again, I will probably not be cooking with the you if we're going to be honest around here. It. I'm going to try to search it out at a restaurant. I will probably not be cooking at home with it, yeah. but I will be searching it out at a restaurant. So wait um, for the Yube update. And if anyone's ever had one, please DM us ooh, yeah. on the Discover it's Instagram like, page and let us know. Give yeah, us, like the pawpaw fruit. If yeah. you know what a Yube is, please give us all the information. Yes, we need it. We need Yube professionals out there. Next one is experimental eating. Experiential. How would you say? How do you say that? Yeah, experiential. Experiential. Eating where you like really cool things happen like flaming desserts, ice sculptures at the dinner table, cocktails that like have smoke coming out of them. Just like very like an experience while you're eating. Yeah, I think this obviously stems from like multiple years in a row now of people not being able to go out and dine. So there's that aspect where they're like wanting to again and being able to. But then also... I don't know. Like, I feel the same way. Like, I don't love to eat out. I do on vacation. I love to, like, finding good food <laughs> on trips is, like, a favorite thing of mine. But I feel like even if I lived in a city that did have more dining out options, I, like, wouldn't be totally into it. It's just not my favorite thing. So I can see why there's this pull to make it, like, more of an experience because I wonder if that's actually more of how society's feeling. Like, I do feel like there's trends to, like, cook at home more and, like, have – I don't know. I'm just wondering if that's, again, like, maybe the restaurant's – idea to get more people back in yeah I'm gonna completely disagree with you eating out is literally my favorite thing if I could (laughs) eat out for every single meal I would you are insane I love being in the kitchen Luke and I cook together most nights and it's like my favorite thing I I love love that for you I love that for us too thank you okay next we got two more deeper into West African cuisine I'm not very familiar with African cuisine so I don't have a lot to add to that but I'm excited to try some new things I just where are you gonna try all these things at do you think no. we'll larger would Lubbock have it, some of it, I wonder? Oh, heck no. But you and okay. I, are we do fun things for Discover Ag. Maybe try to, you know me. When we go to a city, yeah. I find okay. a restaurant for us. So right. I will go back to the restaurant for us. And then the last one, I actually love this vibe of the year, is communal eating. Yes, so, I love this too. Have you ever eaten at a community table in a restaurant? Yes. And a lot of it, I even, I went to Europe, gosh, it was before I even met Luca with a couple girlfriends. Portugal. I feel like that is actually a hugely yeah. rooted in that. And I feel like I uh, authentically even experienced like communal food. Yeah. In Santa Fe, it's very popular in Santa Fe. A lot of the restaurants are community tables. So it's just like natural part when you eat out there. It, oh, that's fine. You could sit at a community table. Listen, I am dying to go to Santa Fe. We just, I just, how have, have to, you never been? I don't know. I keep trying to get you to go with me and you won't. I'll so. go. I go all the time. I'm going in a couple of <laughs> weeks. I'm going twice in the month of January. I'm- Thank you for rubbing it in my face. <laughs> I'll let you know when. Okay, that was all of the vibes. Oh, small. There was one other thing about bonus small bites. And these are just like cocktails, like really fun cocktails. So get excited about cocktails. They said there's going to be a lot of avocados in cocktails, which I thought was weird. But I'm not there for that trend either. 
I know. It was like moving on from avocado toast to avocado drinks. I was like, I wasn't there for avocado toast either. So yeah. How about we just move on from avocados? <laughs> yeah. Somebody out there loves avocados and they're not happy with us right now. <laughs> okay. Tag us in your stories as you eat it. Yeah. Seriously. Okay. So that is all of our news articles mm-hmm. for 